A well-known archaeologist named Louise Leakey had once said, We are only beginning to understand where we came from, and perhaps where we are going. If you go back just 10 generations, or about 300 years, you mathematically have over 1,000 ancestors. Go back 30 generations, or 1,000 years, and that number explodes to well over a billion, more than the amount of people that ever existed on Earth combined. This means your unique lineage overlaps with nearly everyone else's, crumbling the illusion of being separated. Whether your family speaks Mandarin, Swahili, or Spanish today, the math does not lie, we are all leaves on the same ancient branches. Every culture, language, and tradition traces back to common origins, we are only strangers in the shallowest sense. Dig deeper and you'll find a reunion waiting. So basically, every person alive today, no matter where they are from, shares a connection to a small group of humans. And we think those humans are the same people who lived in Africa hundreds of thousands of years ago. And this is the core idea behind the Out of Africa theory, one of science's most famous stories about how we became ourselves. But what if there is more to the story than we had originally thought? The Out of Africa model points out that Homo sapiens evolved in Africa around 300,000 years ago. Then roughly 70,000 years ago, a group of these early humans began migrating to other continents, eventually replacing older hominins like Neanderthals. This idea isn't just a hunch, as for decades, many discoveries have backed this story. Like the 195,000 year old Homo kibish skeletons in Ethiopia, and the groundbreaking genetic research on mitochondrial Eve, our common ancestors are easily traced through DNA, where even climate data plays a crucial role. That's why for many researchers, the evidence feels pretty undeniable. But here is where things get even more interesting. In recent years, fossils like the 180,000 year old Homo sapien jaw in Mount Caramel and ancient skulls in China have popped up, quietly asking, did we really leave Africa just once, or was there more back and forth than we had thought? Could different human groups have evolved together in multiple regions, swapping ideas and genes along the way? If there's one thing human history teaches us, it's that we are always uncovering surprises. Before we continue, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel, it goes a long way. Anyways, let's continue the video. Africa is like a treasure chest of human origin, filled with a huge amount of fossils. Take for example, the Jebel Irhoud site in Morocco, where paleontologists found skulls dating back 300,000 years. These aren't just old bones, they show a mix of ancient and modern features, like a flatter face and a rounded brain case. This could mark the earliest chapter of Homo sapien evolution. Fast forward to Ethiopia, where 195,000 year old skeletons look almost identical to people today. If humanity had a birthplace, these fossils suggest it's Africa. But this isn't only seen within bones. Genetics has also become a time machine for tracing our roots. Now, let's take a quick look back into the mitochondrial Eve, the woman whose DNA is found in every living human's mitochondria, or in simple terms, the powerhouse of your cells. By studying mutations over time, scientists trace her to Africa roughly 150,000 to 200,000 years ago. Similarly, the Y chromosomal atom, the paternal counterpart, points to Africa around the same time. It's like finding your ancestors' fingerprints in your own body. These genetic clues reveal something striking. All known Africans share a subset of diversity found in African DNA. Think of it like a family tree. If you're from Europe, Asia, or the Americas, your genes likely branch off from a group that left Africa around 70,000 years ago. Even the Neanderthal DNA in some of us largely supports this. When those early migrants met Neanderthals in Eurasia, they mingled, leaving a genetic souvenir. But since Neanderthal DNA isn't found in older African populations, it backs the idea that interbreeding happened after the big migration. Now, some of us would like to ask this question, why even leave Africa? Well, climate shifts might hold the answers. Around 70,000 years ago, the planet was a roller coaster of ice ages and droughts. Africa's ecosystems swung between lush and bone dry. Some researchers believe a shrinking green Sahara pushed our ancestors towards coasts and rivers, and eventually out of the continent. Also, there's genetic bottlenecks, which is like a drop in population during harsh times. Which also explains why non-Africans have less diverse DNA today. It's as if only a small group survived to spread their genes worldwide. 
but maybe the most relatable evidence is the things our ancestors left behind. In South Africa's Blombos Caves, archaeologists found 70,000 year old tools etched with geometric patterns. These weren't just for survival, they are early art, proof of complex thought. Similarly, artifacts appear in later Eurasian sites, like a cultural thread connecting Africa to the world. Even innovations like heat treating stone for sharper tools started in Africa, then pop up globally after migration. Coincidence? Probably not. But haven't older tools been found outside of Africa? Sure, Homo erectus, our ancient cousins, left Africa millions of years ago. But here is a part people don't understand. The out of Africa theory isn't about all hominins, only specifically Homo sapiens. Modern tools, art and genes all point to a newer wave, one that brought our species to dominance. And of course, science isn't static. New fossils and DNA studies keep reshaping the story. But for now, the out of Africa theory ties together genetics, fossil and archaeology into a coherent, even if incomplete narrative. It's like finishing a 1000 piece puzzle and realizing half the pieces are still missing. But the picture we do see is Africa at its heart. Lately, a growing stack of discoveries were uncovered, and with them, many parts of our story might need a rewrite, or at least a few footnotes. We found some interesting fossils that don't play by the rules. Take the Misalaya Cave, for example, where archaeologists uncovered a Homo sapien jaw dating back 180,000 years. That's a full 100,000 years older than the official migration wave. If modern humans were already in the Middle East that early, did they wander out of Africa in multiple waves, or maybe they even returned? In 1978, Dolly Man, a 260,000 year old skull from China with baffling features was uncovered. He had a brow ridge of an archaeocumen, but the skull rounded like a modern one. So maybe different human groups did evolve in parallel, borrowing genes and traits like neighbors sharing recipes. Strangely enough, even Africa's own backyard holds surprises. Homo naledi, a small-brained hominin found in South Africa's Rising Star Cave, lived just 300,000 years ago at the same time as early Homo sapiens. If our advanced species coexisted with other hominins, maybe we weren't the only show in town. Maybe it's collaboration, not replacement, that explains our rise. For decades, studies leaned on DNA from non-Africans because ancient African DNA is notoriously hard to recover due to the heat and humidity that destroy genetic material. But this gap distorts the picture. In 2020, a study of West Africa's Mende people found chunks of DNA from a ghost population, an unknown hominin that mixed with humans as recently as 10,000 years ago. Now, who actually were they and why don't their genes show up elsewhere? We surely don't have the answer now, but with the new advancements, we will certainly uncover this secret. Then there's the Homo florensensis, a tiny human species that survived in Indonesia until 50,000 years ago. Their existence proves that other hominins thrived long ago after Homo sapiens began migrating. If replacement was inevitable, why did these mini humans outlast Neanderthals? Maybe the takeover wasn't as swift or as total as we thought. This brings us out to the multi regional hypothesis the underdog cousin of the out of Africa theory. Instead of a single African exodus, this idea argues that ancient humans like Homo erectus evolved across Africa, Asia and Europe, swapping genes over millennia. While most scientists reject the strictest version, some now blend both theories. But the juiciest of them all is hybridization. We used to think Homo sapiens replaced Neanderthals, but recent studies of the Shandia cave in Iraq shows Neanderthals and humans overlapping there for thousands of years, burying their dead with flowers and tools. Geneticists estimate that up to 6% of modern human DNA comes from archaic groups, far more than the old 2% Neanderthal mantra. This begs the question, if we coexisted, why did we survive? The old answer, superior brains or tools, is not really working anymore. Neanderthals had art, medicine and complex hunting strategies. Maybe it was just pure luck, a volcano eruption, a climate shift, or sheer population numbers were always at threat. Or perhaps Homo sapiens were just better at networking and turning fragmented tribes into global communities. We shouldn't also forget that science doesn't always happen inside a vacuum. Early 20th century fossil hunters often dismissed Asian or African contributions to evolution, framing modernity as a European achievement. Even today, underfunded research in regions like Southeast Asia leaves gaps in data. Critics argue the out of Africa theory risks oversimplifying a saga that belonged to all ancient humans, not just the ones who left. 
Furthermore, does this mean the Out of Africa theory is just wrong? Well, not exactly, but it's becoming a collaborative story, and not a solo mission. Imagine humanity's origin as a potluck dinner, Africa brought the main dish, but other continents added their own flavours, and the result was a species remixed by time, climate, and countless chance encounters. So why does this debate even matter? It's easy to think of human origins as a dusty academic topic, something for textbooks and museums, but how we tell our story shapes who we think we are, whether it's a Cherokee's great buzzard shaping mountains or the scientific narrative of a single species rising from a continent. Each story carries weight, the out of Africa theory for all its evidence isn't just science, it's part of humanity's quest to understand itself. Imagine science as a spotlight for decades that spotlight focused on Africa, Europe and parts of Asia leaving entire regions in the shadow. Southeast Asia, Oceania, and the Americas are brimming with unsung stories. As a matter of fact, we found cave art in Swalesi, Indonesia, that dates back 45,000 years, older than Europe's famous Le Sorx paintings. Also in Monte Verde, Chile, we found an astonishing 15,000 year old settlement that rewrote the timeline of humans in Americas. These finds remind us every corner of the globe has a voice in our collective history. This isn't just about picking sides, it's about celebration. Whether our ancestors walked out of Africa once, twice, or a dozen times, their legacy is your legacy. Your DNA is a living archive of Ice Age survivors, island hoppers, and storytellers who cross continents. And while we might never have all the answers, that is this rule of science. The closer we look, the more wonders we find. If this journey through time made you rethink what it means to be a human, hit that like button, it helps others join the conversation, and see you next time into the wild past.